1949, the Soviet Union detonated their first atomic bomb. Shortly thereafter, Canada and the United States began constructing an early warning radar system called the Pine Tree Line. This system was designed to provide a primary line of air defense warning of an over-the-pole invasion of the North American continent. This system had two technical flaws. Firstly, the pulsed mode radar was unable to detect objects traveling close to the ground. Secondly, the location of the radar stations only provided a few minutes of warning to the major population centers within Canada and the U.S. In 1956, a new line of Doppler radars called the Mid-Canada Line, or MCL, effectively rendered most of the Pine Tree Line to be obsolete. The MCL consisted of eight sector control stations and 90 unmanned sites approximately 30 miles apart along Canada's 55th parallel. In 1957, the distant early warning or dew line became fully operational. The initial dew line consisted of 58 radar facilities located along the northern Canadian border. This line was subsequently expanded to 88 stations in the Bering Straits of Alaska as well as Iceland and Greenland. Over 460,000 tons of materials were moved from the U.S. and Canada to the Arctic by air, land and water over a three-year period in order to construct the Dew Line. These radar installations were jointly managed by the Royal Canadian Air Force and the United States Air Force. In 1958, this cooperative venture became known as NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command headquartered under Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado Springs, Colorado. As a response to the introduction of Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs, the Dew Line was upgraded to a ballistic missile early warning system. The defense strategy shifted from destroying incoming Soviet bombers to the concept of mutually assured destruction, or MAD. In a MAD scenario, an ICBM launch from the Soviet Union would be countered with a massive ICBM retaliation from the U.S., effectively resulting in mutual annihilation. Surprisingly, this worked. From 1958 to 1990, the only wars fought between the Soviet Union and the United States were effectively by non-nuclear proxy. Examples include Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Lebanon, Angola, and Latin America. By 1990, the end of the Cold War and the dissolution of the Soviet Union had rendered these radar installations obsolete. The focus has now shifted to environmental remediation associated with the asbestos, PCBs, lead-based paints, and fuel from the decaying radar stations. Thanks for watching.